In this tutorial, we're going to take a final look at some practice exercises to get you comfortable using JavaScript array methods. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome back to this final part of looking at some practice exercises with JavaScript array methods. If you have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates. So this is the final part in our look at JavaScript array methods and I've got five more exercises for you, uh, but this time we've actually got two arrays that we need to work with together. So if you want to have a go at the exercises, head on over to the gist and copy the two arrays onto your clipboard and go ahead and paste them into your developer tools. So as you can see, the two arrays are referencing some users and some potential comments that they may have made on a blog post or some other application that you've got. And you can see the user ID property that's on the objects inside the comments array matches up with the user IDs that are inside of the users array. So our exercises will be mainly focused on finding those users out of the users array to put some meaning behind the comments. So as always, feel free to go through the exercises at your leisure, or if you want to follow along with the video, there's links in the description if you need to skip to a particular solution. So let's take a look at exercise one, uh, which is to find out the user ID of a particular user, which is Madison Marshall. So we could potentially use the filter function to filter out all of the other people in the array, but there is also a specific function for finding a particular item in an array, which unsurprisingly is just called find. So in the function that's passed to the find function, we've got access to each of the objects inside the array, and we just need to put a matching condition in there in order to pick out the user that we need. And you can see we can match on the first name property inside the user, and just find the user that has the first name of Madison, but you might have noticed in the user's array that the last item in the array is also a person that has the first name of Madison, but that's not actually the one we're after. But there could be a problem if the users come out in a different order in the array, so we're probably better off checking for the last name as well to make sure we get the right person. So that's a simple solution for exercise one. As I say, probably better to use the find function rather than filter, as the filter function would actually return an array for you, so you'd need to extract the first person that's returned from it, whereas the find function just actually returns the object that's inside the array. So let's have a look at exercise two. So in a similar way to exercise one, we just need to find out the user information, but this time we're going to base it on the user ID that's stored in the comments array, in particular the first comment in position zero. So this is simply another case of using the find function again. But this time we're going to look for a user with a particular ID, and the ID that we're trying to match on is in the comments array in the first position, and it's the user ID property. So we can see from the result that's returned, Sam Hughes was the first person to comment. And of course, once you've got that user object, you can use it to do other things with the arrays. Or of course, you could find out who wrote the other comments in the positions simply by changing the index number inside of our square brackets. So that's a pretty simple one for exercise two. Let's have a look at exercise three. So this time we just need to find the user who commented. Okay, great, thanks. So there's two parts to this exercise really. First of all, we need to find out the user ID who made that comment. And then once we've got the user ID, we can use that to find the user in the user's array. So this would be the bit of code that we would use to find the ID out of the comments array. And I'm just going to nest that inside another find function to find out the user. So here you can see I've just combined the two find functions together. So once we've got the object of the comment that was made, we can access its user ID property and pass that back to another find function to find the user that matches that particular ID. So in reality, that line of code's getting a bit difficult to read. So we'd probably put the user ID found from the comments.find function into a separate variable and then pass that into a second call to users.find. But just to show that if it does suit your particular scenario, you can write some pretty neat code by combining those two particular find functions on a single line. So that's the solution for exercise three. Let's have a look at exercise four. So exercise four is asking you to add the user's first and last name to each comment in the comments array. So we're going to be adding those in as new properties to the comments array. And this is an extension of what we've done in previous lessons on array methods but it's a little bit more complex because we're dealing with two arrays. 
So let's first of all access the comments and we're going to map their properties. And I'm going to actually open up some curly braces for this one. As like the previous exercise, if we try and cram this all onto one line, it's going to become a bit unreadable. So for each of those comments, let's find the user who made the comment. And what I'm actually going to do is destructure that into the first and last name properties. So I've now got first name and last name stored as variables into the scope of this particular function. So now all I need to do is return a new object that has all of the previous comment properties saved in there. And we're just going to add in two new ones, the first name and the last name. And of course with ES6 shorthand property, we don't actually need to specify the property names as it will be taken from the name of the variable. So you can see now for all the comments in the comments array, we've got the user ID and text, but now we also have the first name and the last name of the person who made that comment. We could also have done other things like remove the user ID from that if we needed to, by simply only specifying the properties that we want when we're returning the object from the map function. So that's a potential solution for exercise four. Let's have a look at the final exercise, exercise five, which is simply asking us to get a list of the users who haven't commented. So what we're looking for is someone who's in the users array who doesn't have an entry into the comments array with their particular user ID. So this seems like a good opportunity to use the filter function. And we need to look inside the comments array to see if this person has actually made a comment or not. So here we're just using the filter function to loop through all of the users in the user array and the condition that we're passing back to be true or false is the result of a call to the find function to see if we can find at least one comment in the comment array where the user ID matches the ID of the current user that we're looking at. So the find function will actually return the object from the comments array but that's enough for the filter function to determine whether or not to include or drop the user from its response. But of course we wanted to find the users who haven't commented so let's just negate the value from the comments.find function which as you can see gives us a list of three people who haven't commented by adding a comment into the comments array. So there you have the solutions to the five exercises in our final part of our JavaScript array methods tutorials. I hope you found this little mini series useful and if you have your own exercises or problems that you'd like to see covered on a future tutorial just drop them in the comments below.